Hey everybody, welcome to Live on Wednesdays. Today we're going to be talking about fermented foods again, but in particular we're going to be talking about why some people would not be able to tolerate or handle fermented foods. And that, one of those things is because of histamines. And you may be familiar with them because during allergy season some people might take Benadryl or Allegra. These are antihistamines and our body produces histamines when we're having an allergic reaction to something. <clears throat> so, but more and more people are having a histamine response to the foods that, that, they, um, that they eat and that's because histamines can travel you know, throughout our bloodstream. And so it can affect our gut, it can affect our lungs, our skin, our brain, uh, our whole cardiovascular system. So because of that, then we might see a variety of different types of systems. And the reason that this is connected to the gut or, or to more foods that we eat is because people have um, things like People with SIBO or IBS or Crohn's disease or other gastrointestinal condition are more prone to have perhaps histamine reactions to things. So um, what are some of the symptoms that we could see? It could be range anywhere from headaches, migraines, anxiety, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal cramps, especially right after eating, flushing, you know, redness, flushing of the face, hives, fatigue, um, nasal congestion, dizziness. You know, a lot of these symptoms are just things you might typically think of as being seasonal, but it could be much more than that. So there is one easy fix is to stay away from high histamine um, foods, such as fermented foods, okay, like sauerkraut um, or kombucha. Other foods would be aged meats, dairy and cheese, such as yogurt, cottage cheese, hard cheeses, um, kefirs. We talked about kefir last week. Vinegars, alcohol, uh, fish, eggplant, tomatoes, spinach. You know, we're all encouraged to do the green smoothies. Well, maybe for people who have histamine reactions, that's not the best green to use in your smoothie. Strawberries, citrus fruits. Now, it doesn't mean that you'd have to stay away from all of these foods. Everybody's different, and so you just have to figure out which ones are your triggers. It may not be all of them. So just figure out which ones are your triggers and then eliminate them from your diet. So, but some people might think, you know, because of what we talked about last week, fermented foods are a really, really good source of probiotics, which is the good bacteria. So how can we get the good bacteria if we have to stay away from fermented foods? Yeah, it's a little bit of a conundrum, right? So, there are some things that we can do. Some doctors recommend first trying like a low, if you've heard of this, a FODMAP diet, F-O-D-M-A-P, FODMAP diet, a, trying a low FODMAP diet, and that removes foods that feed the bacteria. So, like sugars, alcohol, specific carbs, now, I mentioned about the fermented foods, staying away from them, and something that's interesting is that just because, just because a food might be um, high histamine when it's raw, doesn't necessarily mean it is when it's fermented, and vice versa. Um, regular cabbage is one of those one of those kind. So 
it's it's like low if it's raw, but it's high histamine if it's fermented. I'll post a link to an article about that in the comments when I'm done here. Another thing to consider is dimine oxidase. It's an enzyme that is mostly produced in our gut. So again, if our gut is not functioning properly, how can we get the enzyme that we need in order to alleviate the problem with the histamines? So it's commonly abbreviated as DAO, and it breaks down the histamine that our body produces. And the reason that we have a histamine reaction is again, we might be eating too many histamine, high histamine foods. We can be low on this enzyme, DAO. So what are some things that can cause a DAO deficiency? It can be genetic. It can be medications. It can be hormonal imbalances. Um, again, specific GI disorders like IBS, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, celiac, SIBO, nutritional deficiencies, B6, B, um, vitamin C, zinc, copper, high histamine foods, and alcohol. Okay, so how can we naturally increase this enzyme, this DAO, how can we naturally increase it? First of all, number one thing is to go with a low histamine diet, okay? Again, figure out what your specific triggers are. It doesn't mean you have to eliminate everything. Everybody's different, but figure out what yours are. And figure out, determine if it's that food any way it's cooked, if it's just when it's raw, if it's when it's cooked, if it's when it's fermented. Figure all that out for yourself. And only you can do that because you have to test it. Second, balance your fat intake, your different kinds of fat. So that would include increasing fats with oleic acid, which are your omega-9s. So olive oil is really good for that. Um, it can increase your DOA, excuse me, your DAO by 500%. Olive oil. Make sure it's a good olive oil cold pressed, organic, okay? Increasing your omega-3s, like with your fatty fish. Decreasing omega-9s. This would be things like your fatty red meat and your dairy, your hard cheeses and eggs. I'm not saying to eliminate them, but decrease them. And if you're still finding a problem, maybe you need to eliminate them. Include good fats like ghee and cold pressed coconut oil. Cold pressed, that means there shouldn't be any chemicals being used to extract the coconut oil. Okay, number three, eat, increase your healthy proteins. Healthy proteins would be things that are um, grass-fed and organic, your fresh seafood. Number four, minimize your harmful ingredients. So that would be artificial ingredients like coloring, flavorings. Um, eliminate toxins like your pesticides, herbicides. That's where organic comes in, or at least, at least know where it's coming from know your farmer <laughs> maybe it's not certified organic that's okay but know who they are and what their farming practices are what feed are they eating are there pastures that they're feeding on organic in other words they don't use any herbicides or, pe or pesticides or anything with them number five supplements since a deficiency of zinc, copper, B6, and C caused 
a deficiency of DAO, you're going to want to increase supplements that contain those things, those four things, zinc, copper, B6, and vitamin C. And number six, support gut health. Now this was an interesting point to me. Make sure you use a low histamine probiotic. Not all histamines are the same. Excuse me, not all probiotics are the same. There's actually some bacteria strains that will increase histamines. You want to focus on the bacterial strains that will decrease histamines. And there's like way too many for me to list. So I will post a link to that article in the comments when I'm done here. So actually that's pretty much what I had to talk about today. It was a lot of information there. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to comment them, you know, put them in the, in the comments, but there's, there's some things that I didn't know about there, especially that thing about the probiotics, but it's always good to know about. And also that foods can change depending on how they're prepared, cooked, raw, fermented, just because you react to one mode of one method of preparation doesn't mean you will with another method of preparation. So um, you will have to check it out, you know, on your own and figure out what works for you if you have this, if you feel you have this problem. But, you know, if you felt like, oh, but I ate this one time and it was fine, but I ate it this time and it wasn't, maybe it was the way it was prepared. I don't know. <laughs> but it's definitely some things to consider to try to figure out what might be behind your specific gut issues. So that's it for today, guys, and have a great rest of the Wednesday. Bye now.